Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. I had to bring the Unfiltered Brothers in here uh, today and this week as we get ready for Vanderbilt. Obviously coming off of the disappointing Georgia loss at home. It's time for, for Unfiltered Truth. It's time to, to keep it real, right? But keeping it real in terms of we have five games left in the season. I'm still very high on this team. I'm curious to see how Vashon and Chris feel. Uh, but you guys have seen that on many, many times from the Unfiltered Longhorn Talk group on Facebook, a community over 15,000 strong. And uh, excited to have these brothers here today to talk some ball. And before I get to Vashon and Chris, I'm going to roll through this real quick. I also want to give a quick shout out to everybody watching here. So hit the like button, subscribe the whole bit. I know we got a lot of new SEC fans here. So, you know, this is a platform that we love to talk ball, keep it straightforward. So please subscribe the whole bit. Help us grow this platform. And uh, quick shout out to our today's video sponsor, Autograph. Uh, download the Autograph app in the App Store as well as Google Play. It is Google Play Store available as well. It is a free app to follow your favorite football team, your favorite whatever program, NBA, college, what have you. Everything that we're discussing here via video platform you can consume through the Autograph app and get credit for your fandom. Any articles you you read or any podcast you listen to, get credit for that consumption as a fan. Access to what we call true fan pricing, special access to tickets. I'm going to, uh, Chris will be there as well. I'm going to Spurs Mavs on Thursday night. Access to dis, super discounted tickets for an NBA opener, right? Um, games that are coming up down the road, Cowboys games. Texas Longhorn games. They had discounted pricing for Texas, Georgia last week. If you're going to Nashville, they'll have special rates for Texas Vanderbilt. So take advantage of autograph. So happy to be partnered up with these guys. True fan pricing. Also giveaways and fandom for all of the collective points you consume for already doing what you're going to do, following your favorite team. So check out autograph helps out the channel. Use that fanatic 24 promo code. That's what gets you access to the app. Fellas, I'm going to start with you, Vashon. Um, you know, I, I often look to you for wisdom, brother. Um, appreciate, I, it, appreciate it. I do, too. <laughs> I do, too. Right? Um, what are what wise takeaways? What did you learn? You personally, what did you learn from this football game, uh, Texas, Georgia? Let's start there before we get to Vanderbilt. Uh, number one. I'm going to give y'all my unfiltered thoughts, guys. You know, we try to keep it, all of us, and that's one of the things, Steve, I respect about you. We're not too pumped up on Kool-Aid, and we're just kind of more in, in between, and we don't down our team too bad. We kind of stay even keel, but our eyes don't lie. You know, uh, what shocked me, uh, because I bought it, you know, I going into this game, Looking at the numbers, I'm a numbers guy, you know, show me the stats and this and that. And I, I just I just played over and over in my mind. I'm like, I don't see maybe just a few advantages Georgia has over us. But the way we lost. And the way. They handled our offensive line. It shocked me. Um, and the way. It's just the way Georgia came out, man. And <clears throat> I, I think we got a glimpse, guys. I know hey, I know. today has been – everybody is <laughs> now talking about Kirby, you know. Man, Kirby, man, he, you know, with his mindset, look, man, what kind of coach is that? But let me tell y'all something. Let me give y'all – let me give y'all a little insight on a guy that think like that. Kirby motivated his team. If you listen to what Kirby was saying, Think about the mindset his team took. Because one of my classmates, Anthony Evans, his son's number five for uh, Georgia. He plays for Georgia. He told great me. Great player out of San Antonio. Yeah, great right. player out of San Antonio, which Texas would offer. Uh, he told me, he says, bro, y'all got a good team. Nothing personal. He says, but, man, Kirby had these boys ready all week. He had them boys feeling disrespected. Guys, when you are a great coach, you can motivate your team. Y'all remember how Michael Jordan was? All of y'all watch 
Michael George things and how Mike would make stuff in his mind. Yeah, that guy, uh, he didn't shake my hand. And he go out there and destroy a guy. That's what y'all saw Kirby do with his team. Kirby motivated Georgia to the point them boys came out there. They were just more hungry, Steve. And that's what I saw. That first half, they come out there and they just wanted it more to me. And now getting back into some, some things, another thing I saw and what the SEC fans has been telling me, and I, you know, I talk trash with the best of them. And a lot of them, a lot of them was respectful. You know, they was like, look, guys, we ain't nothing, nothing personal against Texas, but y'all were just a little too bit on y'all high horse. We was trying to tell y'all about the SEC grind and about how it week in and week out, how it is. Y'all saw Georgia lose to Alabama a couple weeks ago. You saw Alabama lose to Vanderbilt. You know, you see Tennessee up and down. He says, we told y'all about this grind. You see Ole Miss was looking, whipping pick folks 70 to three. Now they got two losses. It is a grind. And it's full of NFL players in our division. We are now in the division with NFL. And what I saw, Steve, was NFL guys on that defensive side for Georgia <clears throat> going up against our guys. And uh, uh, and I saw an NFL scheme. To me, I think we got our scheme. I'll be honest with you. You know, I'm not going to let Sark off the hook, and I'm not going to put it all on the quarterback. I'm not going to put it all on the, on the uh, offensive line. It was a team effort. We lost. We got a butt kick. I mean, I don't know other way to put about it. We could try to make ourselves feel better. Say, well, no, we were better than that. If that make you feel good, that's cool. But that day, last Saturday night, man, we got a butt kick. And it was it was through coaching, preparation, scheming, all of that. I saw them, I, I saw their defensive line go from a three-down line front to a six down line front and blitz us right up the middle, untouched. Quinn had to get rid of the ball. I mean, and they timed it perfectly, guys. It, it was like they knew our snap count. See, that's that's film study. They knew our snap count, guys. I don't know, I don't know how Flood prepares his offensive line for that. Other than that, you change the you change the snap count, then you gotta you change the snap count, and I think Simp mentioned it. You got to worry about Cam Williams, false start. <laughs> so I, I just don't know, guys. And I just play back in my mind and I look at the windows. And this is my, this my different, what I saw. Sark is best in the country, Steve, at scheming receivers open. One of the best. He can draw up the plays. I'm not talking about play calling, guys. I'm talking about scheming up. That's why a lot of co- quarterbacks – that's why a lot of quarterbacks go play for Sark. Sark can he can play design, play designing and play calling. Guys, is totally different. Play designing and play calling is totally different. It's not the same. Sark is a great play designer. He can scheme guys open. But what I saw was uh, uh, cover one, cover two, press man. The windows were NFL windows. They were tight windows. Quinn has to – Quinn, I don't think he was ready. I don't know. Has he made NFL toss? I don't know. I'm not I'm – not, I'm not, that's not my argument. The point I'm making is the windows are not wide open like they usually are, like they was against UTSA, Colorado State, even o- 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 uh, Oklahoma. There wasn't wide – there wasn't guys just – you know, five uh, a five yard gap between the other guy. They was real tight, kind of like Michael Penix did against us last year. We made Michael Penix beat us with NFL throws. Remember, Steve we said, "Man, I'm just NFL throws. Ain't nothing you can do about that." Exactly. We made Michael Penix beat us with NFL throws, and that's what to me they did with Quinn. Now, to make that next step. If Quinn wants, you know, to make that next step, and that's up to the NFL GM. That's just not that's not me. I'm just giving y'all my opinion. He's gonna have to tr- he's gonna have to pull the trigger. At least throw it. Let it go. Don't hold on to the ball because some of those sacks, those seven sacks, in my opinion, was not all on the offensive line. I'm not gonna beat the offensive line up. Some of those was on the quarterback. Slide of protection. Because remember, the physical part and the mental part gotta all be there to beat a team like Georgia. You got to have both. You got to be able to see the field. You got to be able to see the receivers open. You got to be able to pull the trigger and throw it in that tight window. We failed in all those departments. And then defensively, I was I was proud of the team. 
uh, you know, oh, well, Georgia had some drops. Yeah, we had drops, too. I mean, Trey Wilder dropped the wide open. He's probably still running right now as we talking, you know. So, I mean, drops are part of the game. But, uh, no, I, I, I was pleasantly – I think the defense played pretty good because this is the best offense, Steve, we faced all year. Beck is an NFL quarterback. Let's be real. He is an NFL quarterback. I don't know what round, but he is an NFL quarterback. He made throws. Now, ironically, on the other side, Simp, I saw Beck helping his offensive line. When we did get a little pressure on Beck, guess what Beck did? He slid in the pocket. He stepped up in the pocket. He 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 made all the right pocket awareness moves, and he found receivers open. That's what you want to see out of NFL quarterback. But they Georgia's offensive line is legit, too, because coming into the game, we was number one in pass def, passing uh, defense. I'm sorry, pass protection. We was the number one offensive line. Georgia was the number two. But the argument from everybody in the media and the SEC groups was, y'all ain't played nobody. That's why y'all all of these number one rankings and this and that. That's why I'm through with them rankings, Steve. I'm through. Let my I'm, 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 I'm using my eyes now. I'm through it. So now it was like, okay, look, guys, you, you guys are you guys are number one in all of these categories, number one defense, number one offense. But well, look who y'all played. So to me, that was the measuring stick. That to me, Steve, was the measuring stick because I really needed to see this because I needed to see where we was really at. Sure. I got my answer. I got my answer. But do I believe? I want we you to hold. Stick. I want you to hold on it because we're going to talk gotcha. about that. I got you. Good. Good. Understand. I don't want to talk too much, guys. But yeah. thank you. <laughs> but no, I got my answer. Hold you there. Okay. Okay. One thing I do want to add before I get to Chris and what he learned. The conversation about the windows i don't think that sark upon re-watching the game i okay. agree that we were out schemed and out coached mm -hmm. however all of all it was it wasn't that sark did a poor job i don't think that he did a poor job uh at all actually i think there were the thing is you were gonna have to go through progressions and you were gonna have to play high level football to get the ball there were there were windows. They were tighter windows. To your point about Penix, right? Mm -hmm. It's covered, but you can still make a play, right? You still or make a play. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be a dig route that's going to develop later in the concept of the play, and you saw both quarterbacks struggle with this. Arch missed one to DeAndre Moore. Quinn missed several to Matthew Golden until he started hitting Matthew Golden on some of those digs, but against two man. And that tight man underneath, those are going to take longer to get, but you can get them. Yes. The other thing is with tight windows, with the NFL, everything Georgia does at NFL level, right? So you're yes. also looking at their defensive front and their defensive pressure is also rushing at NFL level. So guess what? You don't have five and six second pockets anymore. In the NFL, someone in the comments, you can correct me if I'm wrong. The, the rule of thumb in the NFL is 2.3. Yep, two to three. Yeah, point three is what they determine is clean in the NFL before it turns over to it's on you, quarterback. Yeah, okay. You got two point three seconds clean that we will guarantee you typically, and then the rest is on you. At Texas, even in the Georgia game, some of these sacks that are being given up are four and five second counts. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, like. That's to me, I know it's not the cleanest, but the thing is he's been we've been used to having nobody back there. Yeah. And now there's traffic. And now there's a little bit you got to navigate. So, we got to be better at the slightest inconvenience, right? We got to be better. Running the football as well, okay? And I'm going to get to yes. the running stuff. Yeah. But <laughs> what you're talking about is inconvenience. It's inconvenient. Hey, guys aren't going to, your first read's not going to be butt booty wide, naked open. That's yeah. why Georgia gets paid. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're, you're, you're going to have to actually read the defense this week. You're actually going to have to manipulate the pocket this week. Mm -hmm. Things that people do in every NFL game you'll watch, right? Like people don't have time like that. So anyway, great, great points for Sean. Chris, floor is yours, sir. All right. First off, man, um, I just think that we, in the beginning, like, we were excited coming in. But you got to – sometimes when you play a game like this, you have to be honest with yourself about everything when you're doing your perspective on it. We got bullied, like, straight up. 
you know, um, that's a word, you know, in our society these days, that's kind of hard to use, you know, everybody's anti-bullying as we should be, but, uh, like we were really that eight, nine year old timid kid. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, we, we got bullied. I mean, that's, that is what it is. Our offensive line on offense got bullied defense, man. I'll just be honest with you. You hold a team to 260, 270 yards offense, you know, total, you get three turnovers. You're supposed to win the game. Yeah, I know there was 30 points given up, but like, man, there should have been 45 or 50. You know, that game kind of reminded me of the national championship against Alabama we played where we had all the three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out. The defense was holding Alabama, but after a while, you just got sick of holding. They, they couldn't do it. No, our defense actually stayed stayed with it the whole game. You know, I'm proud of those boys. But when it comes to the op- offense, offensive line, man, we got buoyed big time. Um, I, I think one factor going into this game, obviously, Georgia had injuries. We had injuries. There's no excuses on that. But one thing I want to talk about, there's actually two things. But the first thing on that is like, man, everybody discounted Cedric Baxter coming into, coming into this season. You know, us as Texas fans, you know, we always talk about, oh, this guy's going to play early. He's going to get drafted. He's going to come out. Then we're going to have these guys next year. We've done that with Cam Williams. We, we've we done that with Jaden Blue in the backfield, man. You know, it's just like what we were missing. And the reason why Cedric Baxter is a five-star back, everybody looks at fantasy numbers. Everybody looks at yards, this, that, the other. Jared Gibson's a four-star. You know, we see me and Bashan see on Unfiltered, you know, People's fans' perspective change depending on the star. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Cedric Baxter didn't get 1,200 yards rushing last year, but the reason why he's a five-star is because he could do all, he could do everything on the field. We were missing that 220, 225-pound back that it will take more than one guy to bring down. You know, he he's great in the passing game, but most importantly, the thing that we missed was him. Basically, they were like, well, Jaden Blue's our third down back. You know, he was in there on passing situations. You know, he didn't even get a rush. Well, when it comes to picking up the blitz, Cedric Baxter may be one of the best in the country. He's obviously the best in our team. You know, when we run when we run our twenty, our our, our twenty one personnel or any twenty personnel with two backs, you know, he's that lead fullback. You know, he can get the ball. You know, there were a time we're trying to be physical, and we're obviously trying to do it other ways. But you know, there was a time where we had our two back personnel was Ryan Niblett, a converted wide receiver at running back, and Trey Weisner. I mean, Trey Weisner is a great back. He looked great against OU, but this is a this was a different beast, man. Like you know, he's. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Hundred ninety pounds. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not crapping on him. We're gonna need him in the future. We're gonna need him this year. But same time, though, when a guy probably should be playing twenty game plays, fifteen twenty plays on offense, is playing that many plays. You know, it's you know we got bullied, man. Uh me and Vashon were talking about, you know, schemes and stuff. I think, and on with being bullied, I think the person we're missing, this team is missing, is Paul Chris. Um, it's hard to, like him in the running game last year, like him coming, as we saw last year, Jonathan Brooks was pretty much leading the nation in rushing, was going to get the dope walker before he got hurt. Okay, he got hurt, we panicked. There was no need to panic because we had our other running backs were ready. There was a scheme you could run inside zone. You could pretty much run whatever you wanted with those with the backs that we had left. You know, we the fact Iowa that we had State. Baxter. We won Iowa State and they were sitting yes. in three high the whole they, game. The whole time. In yeah. The cold weather. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like I'm not gonna bring <laughs> Ogbo into that game. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna bring Ogbo in that game and do stuff like that if we can't run the ball inside. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, yes, yeah, Sark might have got out coached and out schemed a little bit, but Man, like when you're limited in numbers on what you can do, I would like to see if Paul Chris was here where he could he could whisper into Sark. You know, I think Sark did get out coach. I thought I think he got out schemed, obviously. But like I think a guy like Paul Chris, I think that guy's missed. I think what he's able, like I said, man, I would have loved to see what he how he would have said, hey, this is how you use Jaden Blue. You know, Sark's a great coach. But heck, Saban had all those ex coaches on his coaching staff as analysts helping him out. You know, I think Sark's going to get out coached again this year. If a situation now, it may not happen until at the end of the year, you know, maybe the championship game if we're blessed enough to go to or in the playoffs. 
but it's going to happen. Like we need a Paul Chris like guy. So, so let, let's, let's, let's get there. Right. Because, um, and have a community or, or communal conversation here because I, I was at the football game and I'm sitting a few rows up blessed with, with Tran to have great seats and everything. And I'm seeing one thing when you're in person, you see the physicality, you see it wear and tear and all that. And what I noticed with the element of bullying that you talk about, bullying can be defined in a lot of different ways. And the reason why I agree with what Chris said is because it's also psychological. Mm-hmm. When you decide that you are not even going to attempt to run the ball inside. And I know everybody knows this. I know it. You know it. Everybody knows this. We are outstanding in wide zone. We have been making money this year in wide zone. Bubba, Georgia was schemed up for it. A, yep. with their athletes and their speed and them sitting in too high, it's it's easier for them to play that than other teams, number one. Number two, you, you're you not showing any looks inside. It's either pass, which a lot of your passes were horizontal, <laughs> or <laughs> wide zone where – they're keying on it. There's a bunch of clips right now on Twitter going out where, you know, people are discussing where their tells, you know, if Kelvin Banks is in a three point stance, is that a giveaway that we're about to run, get going outside so he can get go like things of that sort, things that Kirby yeah, studied, I've right? That. that that Chaz Chambliss, did he get tipped off? You know, he's kind of pushing outside and Things of that sort. I mean, that's high level football. That's what they do in the NFL on a weekly basis. That's how they read their keys. That's so exactly right. We have to, you know, a tip our caps to that. But a what, what again, learning from that. If you go into a game and you know a team is coming out and they're going to be hyper physical, you you have to punch back. And I know a lot of, you know, I was talking. To, I've had conversations with Karen this week, and Karen's like, "Well, Steve, we don't got, we don't have." He brought up what you brought up, Chris. We don't have Cedric. I understand, Steve. We probably run inside zone if we have Cedric mm-hmm. and we punch back. But yeah. I'm like, brother, we've got – it's about the offensive line, and they got to get lathered up. They got to get in the mentality. Right now, the, their mentality was either going sideways or backwards. Their mentality was not going forward. Mm-hmm. We did not start going forward until the third quarter. And I sent a text to – uh to a couple of my buddies, and I said, look, whether we win the game or not, two yards rushing at halftime is unacceptable, especially when your quarterbacks are playing bad. That's how you settle your quarterbacks down is with run game, especially against too high. Great. Mm-hmm. It's the only way to get those safeties to come down if the quarterback's not going to run it himself. When Sam Ellinger was here, he would run it himself, and eventually the safeties would start coming down. Yeah. If the quarterback's not going to run it, what Milrow did it against Georgia. Uh Pavia also that we're about to face. Some of these other quarterbacks that are mobile will mm-hmm. run the safeties down. Mm-hmm. We don't have that guy, but that's okay. Sark did it to, to Georgia four years ago with Mac Jones. Mac Jones not a runner, but what he did do was they gave the ball to Najee Harris 31 times. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then off of that, I can work because now there's I'm it's body blows. It's constantly I'm matching it. And it's okay to get two yards. It's okay to get three yards. People look at it like it's the worst thing in the world to hand the ball off an inside zone and you only get one or two yards. We're going forward. And it's a mentality. And it makes it for second and third down to be much more manageable. There were too many times in the first half re-watching this where it's third and nine, third and seven, third and yeah. eight. Because Kirby and them are trying to get a minus seven. They're trying mm-hmm. to get a minus six. So that now... I can sit in my two high. I'm playing man underneath. I got Malachi Starks. I got a, a, a Averett over here. It's 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 food. So I'm glad that Sark got to the mindset of the text I sent of, I don't care if we win the game. I want to put on film that we're willing to go forward. I don't care if we run the clock out on ourselves. There needs to be a mentality that we are going to go forward and be a downhill football team when we need to be. Wide zone is a part of our toolbox. But that's not the full toolbox. And I don't care if, if they're, they don't have a runner back there. You have to do it for the offensive line. And for the sake of round one, I mean, because, guys, K- 
can they play that way in round two? They can't, right? Like they're gonna have to come out <laughs> if they play them in Atlanta, Vashon. Yeah, what's the plan, right? I mean, we got to yeah. think about that. the the competition as you go up each week is going to get better. Okay, let's go. Uh, I mean, put it like this. I agree 100% what you said, Steve, about that offensive line. Sooner or later, they got to they gotta look at it. They got to take on that challenge of, man, we fixing it. We finna, we finna open these holes up for, the, for, the, for these running backs in the inside zone. Travis Etienne, he's uh, he's only 200 and I think 13 pounds. He's not a big running back. They were running but it inside. They <laughs> was running it right up the gut on us. Uh, because that offensive line took a personal. I mean, you got to think about it, guys. All Georgia was hearing all week was how good Texas was. How good Texas was. Oh, the Texas offensive line, five guys going to NFL, this and that. No more. The Georgia, the Georgia offensive line, who was equally great, they took that personal. And they went out there and showed us that they took it personal. And, man, we just – just going forward, like you said, Steve, uh, we're just going to get mean. We're going to get nasty. They, even if they got to tinker with the offensive line, I think, Steve, did you notice uh, did they did DJ Camel get pulled? Because I noticed Cole Hudson played more in the second half. They rotated back. They rotated, okay. Yeah, so okay. they were – and it's one of those things where unless you're like literally tracking it, every, yes, yeah, they yeah, rotate yeah. a lot, right? And so yeah. the play, like for example, the Sark screen mm-hmm. that Georgia sniffed out, and and number five on the linebacker runs right to to, to Trey Wisner and doesn't yeah. sell. Cole Hudson was in, and I didn't see a give that Cole Hudson gave away. I didn't see any tell. It looked yeah. like he was running counter. And if he's yeah. running counter, the key of the linebacker is supposed to follow the guard. That's the right. I, I saw that. The, the commentator. Yeah. Ran away from the guard. <laughs> yeah. He, he went straight to the other side. <laughs> like, Bro, they, they knew. They knew you what we were running. <laughs> they knew. I want to say, man, whatever, man, they simp, man, they took this so personal, man. And you could tell Kirby was heated. Up and I said, "Oh, this yeah. because he he played nice guy going into the game. Remember, Steve? He was so right. nice. Oh man, about Sark, Sark. Wow. yeah. We do this, we do that. The bro, when he got that mic in front of him, you could tell what was really on his mind that week and how he relayed his feelings into his team. And boy, they 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 were just like I say, man. They were just they were just prepared. They knew what we were doing. Words. Three words, Vashon. He said." Intent, yep. eat, fight. Yep. Intent, eat, fight. That's how the coach was talking. Yeah. So they're, they're, y'all were in a street fight, and the defense realized they were in a street fight. To be the fair. defense did, yeah, yeah. Because even though they gave up some, you're going to give up some. Georgia's really good. You're yeah. going to give up some. They gave up some, but they did a great job in the red zone defense, especially. I mean. Even the touchdown, the, the 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 deciding touchdown, if you will, they gave up was on fourth and goal, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Kirby yeah. had to make a decision. Like they fought. Jermaine Lolay fought. Like there's some guys, um, and maybe maybe that's something we can talk about now is stock up. Okay. Uh, okay. Stock up on Baron Sorrell. I thought Baron Sorrell fought. Okay. Yeah. Great game. That was his best game. That was his best game, bro. He, that was his best game. He he was like, pushing. He 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 pushed. He pushed their offensive line. Or I saw him pushing Ernest Green, the second Ernest Green, the second, the third, whatever he is. He gonna play in the NFL, man. So I was so proud of him. And uh, one of the thing, what's up, Coach Dub? I'm gonna give Charlie a shout out on here real quick. One thing Charlie pointed out to me and Sim, he rewatched it on all 22 or whatever. When you see the sky van, sky yep. cam, he mentioned. Uh, the two offense. I mean, uh, um, Colin Simmons and Trey Why, uh, Trey, uh, Trey, Trey, Trey Moore. Moore. The Vanderbilt game, and I, I'm not gonna. I don't want to jump into that real quick, but I just we might have to go with Sorrell and Ethan Burt yep. for the simple fact they are too aggressive. They get sucked in too fast, and they fly a field. They fly a field, and all teams do is run right underneath them. And they're running so that triple we, option. Yeah, they're running that triple yeah. option. So we got to Sorrell and Ethan Burke. I think they play more at home, and and and, and you know that's 
I mean, Ethan Burke was the starter last year. That's why we had a good, you know, we we had a real good rush defense. We gave up a little bit on the passing rushing, but run defense was real good. And I noticed they put in a lot of Ethan Burke in the second half too. Uh, but uh, well, it's a good thing. That's that's the good. That's the that's the beauty that PK and that's what. So these are encouraging things now that we're talking about. If you're watching, let's talk about it. Yeah, gotcha. right. So the beauty is you ha- you learn you have options, right? Yes. There's going to be games where most – some of these games earlier this season, it was mm-hmm. a Colin Simmons game. It was a yep. Trey Moore game. Yep. They are the ones that are going to be more effective. We learned in the Georgia game, hey, this is a Baron Sorrell game. He's he's just more physical. He can handle it. Um, Trey Moore made a great play early in the game um, mm-hmm. to help force one of those interceptions. But, you know, he started kind of – they started treating him like a G5 guy later yeah. in the game. So we had yeah. to move away from that. That's mm-hmm. okay. We started fighting. Alfred Collins was up for the challenge physically. He was, man. Deep into yeah. line. That's awesome. He, 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 he balled Tackle out. Alfred Collins to AC. Yeah. Jermaine, Jermaine Lowey, man. Lowey. Yeah. Jermaine Lowey. Yeah. Lowey. He filled in. For whenever, we had to, whenever we had to bring Broughton, off, Broughton out, that guy looked amazing, man. He looked amazing. So Did Broughton there, have a great game, guys? What do y'all think? It, at times. He was he was okay for me. Yeah, there were times where he was getting washed, uh, and then I feel like time, they went right up to good on, on a lot of him when he came in. They ran that that whatever that just straight straight up game. game. Considering yeah. the level he's played at this year, I don't think it was his best game. Yeah, I, I agree. But I do think physically he can compete in this. Oh game. yeah, most definitely, most definitely. I think uh, Bill Norton looked pretty good. He got some really good stat, snaps in the second yeah. half. Yeah, yeah, Number and 15. Bill Norton played a lot on goal line. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, look, the, the, the thing is the defense, even though they were having to find the right combo of guys, they were fighting. I mean, that we started Layfow and he, it was, it was, it was moment a little too big. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, had to go back to, we had to go to David Benda and some different type of personnel packages to, to, to supplement it next to Ant Hill. Um, Ant Hill, in terms of linebacker, pure linebacker play, I was fine with. I thought he was tackling okay. As a pass rusher, same thing as Colin Simmons and Trey Moore. Mm-hmm. Against that length and that size, they only know speed and to go yeah. keep going up, right? Mm-hmm. Baron Sorrell understands leverage. <laughs> so yeah. it was a little bit different, right? And so yeah. these are learning things, but these are good things. Uh, stock up, though, big, big stock up is – my secondary, my secondary, Jade. who was being called out, the secondary who people said they have not faced, and they hadn't, they had not faced any passing offenses like that. Uh, look, guys, Vashon said it earlier, Carson Beck will be an NFL quarterback. What round he goes, I don't know. He wasn't super accurate, but he is a high IQ quarterback, and he does a lot of things at line of scrimmage that only, if you really understand the game, you notice. Um, and he's and he's got better mobility than you realize. But coming in this game, he had thrown for 400 yards two weeks in a row. Okay, yeah, they, sure. they were a team like us that had been throwing to set up the run, not running to set up the throw. That's how Georgia had been operating since the second half against Bama. That's how they've been rolling. So to see our guys, Andrew Makuba, who got thank God he's not out for the season, he'll be back. Yes. Um, you know, my 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 BAM crew, him, uh Jod A. Barron, and Michael Taff. My ba- they are they're unbelievable football players. They lived up to the challenge. Manny Muhammad played well. He only gave up he gave up one one explosive, but that's the first one he's given up all season. Yeah. So yeah. My my secondary, I really felt like even with the injuries, like Jalen Gilbo did what he could. I mean, he's playing a tough spot. He's he's off uh being the read guy in a lot of these plays. That's the toughest position in the secondary right there at the star position. It's the toughest. We could have used Derek Williams, though. His physicality would have been – was missed. You know, him going down last week really hurt us. That was missed. Yeah, especially some of those downs where you just need to get people on the ground on third down in the Mm -hmm. – That's where he comes into play. (laughs) That's the most player we got in the secondary, yeah. Yeah. But – Jelani McDonald, hey, it's time to grow up, right? Yeah. And he's, yes, and sir. Now, now he's playing. Like there's mm-hmm. no yeah. way. There's no rotating. Forty, fifty anymore. snaps. He's playing. Yeah, he's playing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. JJR has to get ready at safety. He's that next guy behind those guys. 
I don't want to move Jody Barron to, to safety unless we have to. Obviously, I know whenever you know we're we're in our normal coverage and we drop to a cover three to change it up a little bit, he'll be back there, and that's fine. You know, in the middle of a play, but like I love what he's doing at cornerback right now. I mean, who's right now? Who's 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 going to win the Thorpe Award right now? Who's who's number one? That guy's top two or top three right now in, in voting. He has to be. He's having an unbelievable season. Yeah, he, great season, great and season. Yeah, I remember he some fans. Himself money. He's made yeah, yeah a lot, I remember a lot of fans were concerned about that. Remember, uh, Steve, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know, I don't know if he can run and this and I was like, hey guys, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cornerback, it, not all the great cornerbacks run a four three. You don't have to have a four three speed. Yeah, I think yeah. he's improved though. Um, even his decisiveness on some of the longer stuff of just seeing it and going, not hesitating. Um, it's remarkable. I think his physicality is outstanding. I think Taff has improved his physicality even more. Mm -hmm. uh, all these guys, they're sound tacklers in the open field. I'm just really impressed with the secondary. I think they did a remarkable job. And Me too. that's they're one of the reasons why I'm high on this team because they've also taken a leadership position this week, y'all. Michael Taff coming out, it meant the world to me for him to say, uh, Anwar Richardson asked him, you know, what, what message do you have for the team? Or what? He said, message for the team. I had to look in the mirror myself. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to take accountability themselves. He said, wow. I, I could have done more. I misplaced. I miss, I, there's better calls I could have made. So before, and he said, once I'm through with that, then I must go and uplift my teammates. Not go and correct them, not go hold other people accountable and point fingers. Then I must go and uplift and see how I can help. Similar message came from Jade Barron after the game as well. Their headspace is in a good – I think they're going to keep the noise out, and I think they're going to go and kick butt in Nashville as we start to transition to that. Um, I think right now, as a fan base, let's let's address the main thing. Okay, let's address the elephant. If we want to talk about concerns, it's the quarterback. That position was, was the worst position on our football team. There's another unit we I'm going to talk about before we we get up here, but I want to get to you guys. Uh, is this the biggest game in Queen Ewer's career coming up in Nashville on Saturday? I think it is. I mean, this is this is this this is this is it. And I'm not overreacting. I'm just being truthful. And here's my thing on that. It's not just this game. It's not just the Georgia game. It's not just the Oklahoma game. I want you guys to think about something right quick. And I said this to Vashon, and I said this on unfiltered to a couple of guys too. Okay, we're all baseball fans a little bit in some way. It seems like every time when Quinn gets hurt, you know, and he comes back, you know how baseball players get hurt on a 15-day, dis you know, disabled list or whatever. Those guys got to, like, they go to a minor league, you know, play a couple minor league games to get their, their rust back, you know, and then they got to come back. Man, if you look at the last – every year that Quinn Ewers has played in college, I mean, you can go back since high school, the kid's gotten hurt, all right? I'm not, I'm not blaming him for that. The thing that I'm that I'm kind of worried about that concerns me and what we're seeing now is what we saw in 2022 when he got hurt, is what we saw uh, 2023 when he got hurt, those next three games where he struggled. He didn't have a good game last year once because he came back TCU. He looked okay. That game was a little closer than it needed to be. You know, it, it looked like his eyes. I judge him on his eyes, all right? There was a lot of pressure on Saturday. His eyes didn't look, weren't at the place as it needed to be, despite there was pressure. You know what I'm saying? It took him three games, 2023. You know, we, I didn't feel comfortable about Quinn until the Oklahoma State game, and I was like, oh, yep, that's the Quinn that I know. You know, 2022, you know, yeah, he, he came back for the OU game. Oh, you didn't have a quarterback. We were going to destroy them no matter what. They were prepping for that game. You know, so I don't count that. If you look at the games after that that he had, look at the Iowa State game that he had that 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 day. He had like 19, 20 incompletions. We won the game, but he struggled. You look at the Oklahoma game, or not that Oklahoma game, whatever Oklahoma game was State next game. after. Yeah, the Oklahoma State game. Yeah, he had third. He was nineteen of forty nine passing. Okay, every time he gets hurt, it just takes forever. I'm not saying he's holding us down, you know. And like you said last week, Steve, like. Bubba, Bubba's got to stop getting injured. You know, NFL GMs are saying that. Every time he gets hurt, it looks like all the progression that we've seen from him, it just, it's it's like all for nothing. Like, it takes 
he, he steps back three steps from the three steps that he took. He's back where he was. For this team to get and to be where we need to be, we can't have that, man. Like, yeah, I know the, the, there were tighter windows, you know, because these are SEC DBs. We faced a team, the one team in the SEC that could have did what they did to us. You know, and I'm not talking trash. I'm not being that bad Texas fan that's saying the SEC is not that tough. I think it is a little top heavy, but that's the one team on defense that could have done that to us. You know, I agree but one you. thing one thing that I did miss though is that like that crossing route was open every time, but you got to step up in the pocket and be able to do it. And what I'll say lastly, you know, I said this and I was thinking about analogies with Quinn's footwork. Like your footwork is not going to be good at all. All right. All right. When you're, I don't, I don't, I don't think Quinn's ever heard of Bernie Kosar, but the way bit, the way Quinn's footwork is, man, like there were times where Bernie Kosar was playing for the Browns or when he was back up for the Cowboys. If that guy dropped back too far in the pocket, he wasn't getting out. If that ball wasn't getting complete because of his footwork was so bad, he was getting sacked. You know, is Quinn injured? If he's injured, is he going to be able to step into a ball? He wasn't really stepping into the balls whenever he wasn't injured. I mean, that's, that's, that's where I'm at. Like, where are we at? Like we can't, you can't go backwards when everybody else in your team is moving forward as a season going in their progression and their experience. Well, Sean, what's your response to that? I, you know, I hate to be the Texas fan that swing the pendulum way to the left or maybe not far enough to the right, but Man, if we – just my opinion, guys. Y'all can beat me up in the comments if you want. And, and that's why we call it fanatic perspective, just my perspective on it. But uh, he really – if he comes out bad in the first half against Vanderbilt, I think he's going to get pulled. And from that pool, I, I hate to swing it all the way to the left because there's a lot of stuff can happen. Yeah, that may be that. That might be it. Now, Salt might give him the whole game. I don't know, guys. But yeah. man, this Vanderbilt game is very, very important for him because the first game against Oklahoma, he got a pass. That's Russ. We're gonna say, hey, man, that's Russ. You know, like Sim say, every time he comes back, he's a little rusty. Remember, Steve, we had this conversation. Do you play him against Mississippi State because of the rush? Everybody, oh, no, he's going to come back. So I said, okay. But he came back. He was clearly rusty, and he's not seeing the field like he was. God, I, when I watched Quinn the first two or three games this season, hindsight, he was not playing against NFL DBs or NFL defensive lines, except for Michigan. Michigan. Be yeah. Michigan, yeah. Michigan. Michigan's number five. The the yeah, Michigan's out there. Yeah, yeah, he was stepping up in that pocket great. like it was going out of style. Grant, yeah. uh, Josiah Stewart, Will Johnson. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, they that was NFL personnel that they had out there. Mason yeah, Graham, saying, yeah. and, that, and, and that's why I feel good about Georgia, but I don't. we're talking about Vanderbilt a little bit, about this quarterback <laughs> situation. So, to me, Steve said it earlier. When Quinn is on point, it's one, two, three, let it go. One, two, three, let it go. I saw one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> oh, now I'm going to try to run and bail out my sack because he doesn't have the escapability. To me, he's not seeing the field well. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the bigger problem than the physical stuff. He is not seeing the field like he was the first two and a half games before he got hurt. Because even when he got hurt and he threw that pick after he hit his hand on that finger, I think that was against uh, Louisiana. <laughs> Yeah, bro, he was he was he was hitting guys and he was wide open now. Don't get me wrong, but he was he was one, two, three, he was just letting it go. Uh, yeah. If he's not doing that against Vanderbilt, then we might have a problem. That's I said all of that long-winded guys to say, you know, and I and I seen fans on unfiltered, y'all beating up on Quinn. Why is the media? Because the media is even starting to write on him now. I mean, you starting to get the national media right. Hey, is this guy really a first rounder? Guys, that's not us. That's that's the national media. Yeah. Is he really a first rounder? Because what we saw didn't look like it. And they got the right to question that. But the point is, in the end, me, Steve, and, and, and Simp can say whatever we want to say. 
But if he comes out against Vanderbilt looking like that, guys, it's it's nobody's going to have his back. We love him, and I love Quinn. I've Y'all been I've been very I've I've been defending Quinn to the point like, no nah, man, that's my dude. Dude was reading the field. He was moving the ball methodically up and down the field, carving defenses up. But then Oklahoma, I said, okay, all right, that's Russ. And then when I see Georgia, I'm going to say this. Okay, he played against the NFL defense. But Vanderbilt's not NFL defense. If he's looking like that against Vanderbilt, then Texas, we have a problem. So let me let me let me kind of put a bow on this because we got a roll. I got you. <clears throat> Georgia is a litmus test. I hope we get to see them again, whether it's in Atlanta or <laughs> in, in the playoffs. Uh, not just for for get back sake, but also for Quinn's sake and whatnot. The same way that we're talking about stock down on Quinn and whatnot. This is just this is all based on what's happening on the field and tape. This is, has nothing to do. We all like the guy. That's why that's why it's hard for us to have this conversation because yeah. we, we we were all rooting for him. I, I I have nothing against Quinn. I think he's a wonderful yeah. kid. He's a great kid. Um, yeah. But film's film, right? Tape's tape. Yeah. And when we crunch the tape, it's a quarterback. It's bad quarterback play. It just is what it is, right? I mean, this is big boy football. So you got to have big boy words. The same way it went stock down against Georgia is the same freaking reason why CJ, that's when we knew CJ Stroud could play football. Yeah, because of what he did against Georgia, because yeah. of what he showed in those windows, because of how he moved when things were not clean, because C.J. Stroud's whole career at Ohio State, people were wide open. It was he's yeah. throwing the infinity yep. stones, the whole thing. Yep. And when yep. he got in that bowl game, he showed you he could be a big boy quarterback. And yep. nobody had questions about C.J. after that. With mm-hmm. the, physically, he was running. He was making the tight window throws. He lost uh Mark. I think he lost Marvin Harrison Jr. in that game. He still was moving the football. Yeah. yeah. That's Great what point. a top quarterback looks like against Miss a Bill Bill. like that. He had yep. no run game in yep. that game. If I recall, the running backs were hurt. So yep. what we, what we, at some point, and what I'm saying, what I'm ultimately saying is you have to overcome the excuses. Mm-hmm. You have to overcome those things. Do I think that every single week is going to be that type of challenge? No. Is no. Vanderbilt that type of challenge? No. That's no. why you have to go and play well. That's why the performance needs to be high. Vanderbilt does not have the personnel to go and sit in too high and get immediate pass rush with four people up front no. and play man <laughs> no. coverage. They cannot do that. They're going to no. have to play some wonky zone or whatever yeah. like everybody else does against us. Mm-hmm. So he'll have help. We'll be able to run the ball, okay? Like, there's there's going to be things that are going to help Quinn. Another thing that can help Quinn is special teams. He, I correct me if I'm wrong. Hopefully, Vanderbilt doesn't have a punter like Georgia did that can flip the whole damn field. Yeah. Sixty yards, that dude can boom. I said, man, they got a Michael Dixon. <laughs> they got a Michael Dixon. God, dog. Well, hey, man, just- poor, so it's poor Bond, Silas Bond couldn't do nothing. <laughs> Do we get our punter back? We're a hundredth in punting right now. <laughs> in actual punting yards. We're, a, we're I actually want to end on that, Chris. The special teams has to be better. I'm gonna say two things. I'm gonna say two names. Keelan Robinson, Keaton Crawford. Mm-hmm. We missed the argument. They were two of the best special team guys in the country. Yes. Oh, yeah, and we missed Derek Williams, who got hurt on special teams last week. Yep. Yes. We miss him. According to Pro Football Focus, we graded out at a 58 in special teams this past week. That includes punting. We didn't kick, right? So Burt wasn't even involved. That didn't even include field goal kicking. We got <laughs> penalties in the return game. The penalty yeah, that Rose. we got when we tried to go, we went we went return. Yeah. We went return left after the first ETN touchdown out of the end zone, which was a called return, and we smoked it. And we, it becomes what a seventy-five yard penalty because of that hold. Mm-hmm. So we have got you want to talk about helping the team and helping the quarterback. Special teams, Jeff Banks. That's that's not a standard. We were one of the best special team units in the country last year. Blo- have we blocked a kick yet this year? I, I don't think so. Right. So. Special teams wise, I think Michael Taft may have tackled somebody. I don't know if he blocked it, but I mean, 
kick return, punt return. We have we've had one big punt return, Silas Bolden. The rest of them have been choose your own adventures. He's trying. That sucker ain't scared, boy. Man, I wish I had that guy's heart. That dude is like, man, he's probably my height, maybe a little shorter. He's got a little too much heart. Yeah, he's got too much heart. He's got a little too much heart. He's got to be careful. It's like, yo, let's have some common sense here. They can see Um, I say all that to say Quinn needs to have a very good football game in Nashville. There's no excuses. Mm -hmm. Okay, the defense has to deal with Diego. That's a whole yeah. nother animal. That's a whole nother animal. That's the best that's a, quarterback. That guy's a dog. That guy is a dog. I like but him a lot, man. On Quinn's for Quinn's sake, the run game's sake, for Sark's sake. They, I mean, or else we're going to be having a whole bunch of different conversations here. Uh, Bashan, Chris, any party thoughts before we we, we sign off? Because I know we got to run here. You first, Bashan. Yeah, I got it. Oh, uh, just man, like y'all. Hey, bro, we said it. Man, y'all hit on every point that I, that was running through my mind. Uh, we just got to play disciplined football to go against Vanderbilt. You know, our guys, uh, they run like a triple option, and they look for big shots. Uh, Diego, uh, they they might, you know, three or four, five explosive plays during the game, and they usually score on those explosive plays. That could end up being 28, 35 points. I feel confident in the defense because we haven't really let balls go over our head this year. But, man, Steve, you hit the nail on the head. I'll never forget this conversation. That uh, uh, And I respect Gundy. A lot of people don't like Mike Gundy, but he's a great football coach. That's why he's been there forever. He mm-hmm. said when he looked at the tape of the Texas team last year, he said the first thing I look at is a good football team, how good their special teams is. And he said their special teams was outstanding. Steve, I didn't think about that. Thank you for putting that on my radar, brother. We mm-hmm. have not been good at special teams this year. Guys, will that come back to bite us? I don't know. But, yes, we when we when you got good special teams play, that shows the depth of your team as well. You know what I'm saying? So uh, as the competition ramps up, we need to be good in all three phases of the game. Let's go out here. They should. I'm, I want to see the mentality of this team. Got dog get, get mad. I want to see 45 to 7 this week. They need to be mad. Man. And if they can do that, then I, I I know mentally this team is there because I'm a big guy on mental. You can have all the physical tools you want, but if you're not there mentally, it doesn't do anything. Georgia was ready mentally. They felt disrespected. Same thing we did to Alabama last year, Steve, when we went to Alabama. You know what the Texas off, off the guy said? Well, we felt disrespected. All they was talking about was Alabama, Alabama, this. And guess what we did? We went out there and kicked Alabama butt. We got to get that mental edge. Quit reading the press clippers. Quit going down on 6th Street. Quit going to Franklin's Barbecue and get your butt in the lab and handle business. Let's do that this week. So, yeah. Okay. Man, I just want to say this. As you know, I've talked about this, you know, on here with you guys and in private conversations. My favorite player on the team is Kelvin Banks. I love him. I love his heart. You know, the guy, his mom is, is battling cancer. You know, he's got a lot on his mind. He didn't have the best game. If you look at people online talking about Texas offensive line, people online talking about this, that, the other, about Banks questioning him. There was a play in that game where, you know, he blocked this guy well enough. He pancaked the guy, got him on the ground. Jalen Walker. Yes, yes, yes. First rounder, yes. Uh, Quinn, like I said, we were worried about Quinn's eyes. Quinn didn't step up in the pocket like he did. The guy trips. Like, I've never seen a guy get pancaked and get the sack, man. And, and Banks is not trying to show up as quarterback, but he has his hand like, what do I have to do in this situation? Why do you, you know? the ball? But my you thing with everybody, man. yep. But with, with everybody saying about Banks, man, and this offensive line and Jake Majors, I'm interested to see how we come back next week, obviously, against Vanderbilt, which is an inferior opponent, but it's going to be hostile. Remember, guys, it's on the SEC network this week. Everything, there's always an us. Uh, uh, an upset or team always gets surprised <laughs> on that SEC network. That's yeah. fine. But I'm yeah. really interested to see how for the remainder of this year. Also, Kentucky has a, a fierce defensive line that's going to be just like Georgia. That's going to be able to attack us the same way, man. How is Banks, how is senior Jake Majors is going to come back and keep these guys, these guys ready? How is senior Hayden Connor? That's the strength of our team. All right. Is that offensive line? They struggle. You know, it's not about how what happens to you when you get knocked down. It's how you respond, man. It's how you respond. I'm so interested to see what these guys do 
this, if Texas is going to finish how we want to finish, if we're going to, you know, play in the SEC championship game, if we're going to get revenge against Georgia or against anybody else on that other end, whether it's AM or LSU, we need to, it needs to happen up front. Kelvin Banks, what you got for me, man? You know, Kelvin Banks, make what, 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 what does Geo Royal say? Sean, Kelvin Banks, do something to do make, something me, make smile. me feel good. <laughs> yeah, make, do something to make me feel good, you know. And uh, my prediction for Saturday is going to be 41-20. I think Kelvin Banks is going to do something to make me feel good. I love it. I love it. Um, and that would be Texas covering because I think the spread is Texas minus 20 and a half. Yeah. For you degenerates listening out there. 41-20, hey, baby. Check out these guys. Y'all saw they brought the heat today. Y'all saw it. But Sean and Chris, I, I knew this is the medicine I needed personally. And this is the medicine that a lot of you guys needed, that unfiltered truth. Go check them out. I will have their link below to their to their community. Like I said, they are 15,000 plus strong over there talking Texas football 24-7. Unfiltered Longhorn Talk on Facebook. Hit that like button here on Fanatic Perspective. Subscribe the whole bit. Thank you to our sponsor, Autograph. Use that Fanatic 24 promo code. Y'all, we are out. Remember, horns. Always up. Let's get it back this week. Hook them. Hook them.